Margaret Thatcher. Europe is not the creation of the Treaty of Rome, nor is the European idea the property of any group or institution. We British are as much heirs to the legacy of European culture as any other nation. Our links to the rest of Europe, the continent of Europe, have been the dominant factor in our history. For three hundred years, we were part of the Roman Empire, and our maps still trace the straight lines of the roads the Romans built. Our ancestors. Celts, Saxons, and Danes came from the continent. Our nation was, in that favorite community word, restructured under Norman and Angevin rule in the 11th and 12th centuries. This year, we celebrate the 300th anniversary of the glorious revolution in which the British crown passed to Prince William of Orange and Queen Mary. We visit the great churches and cathedrals of Britain, read our literature, and listen to our language. All bear witness to the cultural riches which we have drawn from Europe, and other Europeans from us. We in Britain are rightly proud of the way in which, since Magna Carta in 1215, we have pioneered and developed representative institutions to stand as bastions of freedom, and proud too of the way in which, for centuries, Britain was home for people from the rest of Europe who sought sanctuary from tyranny. But we know that without the European legacy of political ideas, we could not have achieved as much as we did. From classical and medieval thought, we have borrowed that concept of the rule of law, which marks out a civilized society from barbarism. And on that idea of Christendom, for long synonymous with Europe, with its recognition of the unique and spiritual nature of the individual, we still base our belief in personal liberty and other human rights. Too often, the history of Europe is described as a series of interminable wars and quarrels. Yet, from our perspective today, surely what strikes us most is our common experience. For instance, the story of how Europeans explored and colonized, and yes, without apology, civilized much of the world, is an extraordinary tale of talent, skill, and courage. We British have, in a special way, contributed to Europe. Over the centuries, we have fought to prevent Europe from falling under the dominance of a single power. We have fought, and we have died for her freedom. Only miles from here, in Belgium, lie the bodies of 120,000 British soldiers who died in the First World War. Had it not been for that willingness to fight and to die, Europe would have been united long before now. But not in liberty, not in justice. It was British support to resistance movements throughout the last war that helped to keep alive the flame of liberty in so many countries until the day of liberation.